Databases are very important when it comes to creating user-based content, as in any game you create, it's going to be very important to save that user's data because imagine you joined a game and then you play for an hour and you get <laughs> really rich in this game. Then you come back the next day and everything's gone. You have to start from zero again. I mean, that's horrible. So, so what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to save that information. Now, previously in other videos, I've gone over simple databases and saving uh, certain values such as your cache and everything like that. But in this video, we're going to be focusing uh, specifically on advanced databases. Now, what this means is we're going to go over things like saving all of the information in a folder so that when they come back, they can load it again. By more specifically, saving tables in Roblox. So let's get into it, shall we? So the way that this can be useful is, say, someone has an inventory with tons of skins in it, for example. So in a game such as Arsenal, you have all those weapons and all those skins, and they all need to be saved in a database, otherwise they'll be deleted when you leave. So a while ago I had this exact problem, but I managed to come up with a script for it that I'm going to share in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first set up this folder and what my example is going to be. If you guys are doing this in your own game, you're most likely going to have your own folder. So just focus on that. I'm just going to set one up real quick so that you guys can see it. Okay guys, so as you can see, I've set up a very simple script that basically I have a folder inside the player and it's clicks. And then each time the player clicks, I'm going to click now. And there you go, I'm clicking a couple of times. It's going to uh, create a new instance, which is a click. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend doing this in your real game, but just an example, I'm going to have this like this. You would have your weapons, so the different type of weapons would be saved here. If you're interested, I'm just very simply detecting when the player clicks a button, then firing a remote, uh, the remote event, which then gets picked up on the server and creates a new instant inside the player's clicks folder, which is defined up here. Okay, now we can get to the actual saving. So first of all, to be able to save anything in your game, you're going to need to allow uh, saving databases or saving information. Um, so if you click up here, the game needs to be published by the way, but if you click up here and then go to um, security, then here we can see enable studio access to API services. And look, enable studio access to game services such as data stores. So we need this enabled to be able to actually uh, save information on Roblox's servers. So if we enable this and then hit save, then now we can define our databases. So I'm going to start off with simply just uh, creating the actual um, the actual database. There's no special information here. It's basically just the same as everything else. So we create something called uh, local click data, and this is going to be um, uh, game colon get service, and we want to get the data store service, and then we want to get data store, which is going to um, retrieve our data store, and we want to do click data. Now this is going to come back with nil if um, there isn't any data store, so that if there isn't any data, but if there is information or if this data store has actually been created, then it will come back with the data store. So what we want to do is we want to check it, uh, check to see if it's not nil. So uh, we need to request um, the player's data store, so we're going to have to save it individually per player. And the way that's most commonly used for this is when we are saving the database, we save the key under the player's ID. Now, I, I know that sounds quite complicated, but if we simply just write out game.players. Uh, player removing kernel connect function and then player. Now, uh, this when the player is leaving, and if we, because we, we want to be saving it when the player is leaving, you can save it in uh, other times. Uh, you can save it in other times um, in the game. It just depends on your game. But for here, we're just going to save it when the player is removing. And then when we do save it, we want to do uh, click data, colon set a sync. And then I'm going to save it, like I said, with a key of player.userID. Uh, and then we want to save the information afterwards. So the information is going to be the contents of the folder, but we're going to need to get this in a minute. So I'm just going to leave it like this. If you were to run it, it would save just nothing in the folder. Uh, so uh, well, nothing in the database. So we want to leave this like how it is. Uh, we need to leave this how it is. So yeah, if we basically just do that, and then up here, we need to check uh, whether the information is actually uh, being created, like I said. 
So if we do if click data colon get a sync and then player dot um, user ID. If we do this, then basically it will pass if and go through if it's, um, you know, not actually registered, but if it is registered and if they can find the database, then it will actually run what, what's inside of it, so the contents. Okay, so now on to the interesting part. So first we're gonna start off with the saving and then we're gonna do the loading because we want to save the information, but then we also want to load it. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to completely clear any information that is currently on the database. So I'm actually going to use this one here. So I'm going to do uh, click data to kind of set a sync. So I'm basically going to load the information and give it the information of an empty table. So there'll be no information saved with it. So now we want to actually define the table which all the information is going to be loading onto. Uh, so I'm going to create a variable and let's call it um, click table, it doesn't matter. And we're going to create this as an empty table. And then we're going to want to, uh, basically we're going to want to loop through the players folder and then for each item we're going to need to create, uh, we're going to need to insert a uh, new click. So. What we're going to want to do, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do um, for i comma v in pairs uh, player dot clicks, yes clicks, which is the folder can on get children. So basically, you want to specify your folder here, um, and then you want to do do. And now this is going to mean it's going to it's going to run through each of the uh, well every item inside that folder and v is now going to become the value of um of, of that item so if i was to reference v and just print it out when i was leaving the game each click would have uh each click would be um, printed out so basically this is what we need to do because we need to go through the folder and add an instance each time so this is a very handy function that you can use in roblox lua uh, and I rec really recommend you use it often because it's super helpful. Anyway, you can add parameters here. So previously I made it so that um, there was also an equipped avatar inside of this folder, or the folder that I had in my real, in one of my real games. Uh, so basically just added an if statement there. So besides from that, we can basically just insert here. So what we wanna do is we wanna do table dot insert, and then we wanna uh, reference the click table, so clicked table and then we want to do um, v dot name I'm going to reference this by I'm going to reference it by name you could have something called um, weapons or each or you could have something like all of the instances have the name of weapon uh, but then if you click on the value it's the individual uh, it, but then if you click on the value it's the individual weapons so you just reference it instead of name, you just put the value. It's basically, this is the string that is going to be a part of the table. It's going to be the thing that references the individual um, uh, item, whether uh, it's going to be inserted into the table. Since it's a click for me and they're all gonna be the exact same, I'm just gonna use the name because it, I don't have anything saved as the um, value. So yeah, you basically use it as what's going to specifically identify as the or as the information, as the item. So that's basically it, and all we gotta do now is just save the information. So we wanna do click data, colon, um, set a sync, same as above, but this time we want to save the um, click data as the table. So now we've actually got the saving and the information, we can try and check it out. So if I play the game, we find that if I open up the folder and I start clicking, I've clicked one, two, three, four times. And if I leave the game, we should see that it starts to, well, it's, it's saving the information right now. So in studio, it will take a lot longer, but uh, here, yeah, so it's saved the information. Now, if I come into the data store editor, now this is a very useful plugin. I'm not sure if it's paid for, but um, it's very useful for uh, visual visualizing data stores. So if I simply just go and reference the click data, and if I connect, then we can enter in my key, which is my user ID, and here we go. So we have the table saved with my user ID as its key, and then we have the four clicks that have been saved. 
Now, if I load into the game right now, you'll see that nothing happens. There won't be any loaded information because we haven't actually specified it. And this also means that if I leave the game now, since there's nothing in that folder, that data store is going to be completely cleared. So we, we must save the information or we must reload the information. So as you can see, if I just uh, connect to it again and then reset it, you'll see we have an empty table here, which is not what we want. So we want to actually load the information. Then the way we're going to be doing this is simply by loading the information and looping through the information, just like we did down here with the, um, the folder. So since this is a table, we can basically, like I said, use the same method we used here by doing uh, for i comma v in pairs, and then we're going to want to do data. However, this data, this data hasn't been specified yet, so we're going to want to specify this information. So I'm going to do um, local data equals click data colon get a sync uh, player dot user ID. And then now what we can do is finally we've got the information. We can basically just do the same thing we did uh, well here, what I did um, when we created the instance. So if I'm just going to, well, so I'm just basically going to copy the copy and paste this information, and then I'm going to reference this as V um, because we want the information to be the same. However, uh, this can be, you know, this this is going to be how yours is. So you can have the information that is saved, which is going to be here. I've saved it as the name. If yours was your value, you could do click dot value equals v, and then you have your name as whatever, like a weapon, like I said previously. So now when I join into the game, you should see that I have nothing in my inventory. But if I click one, two, three, four times, we have the four clicks in that folder. And now if I leave the game, we should see it takes a little bit of time but that's because it's in studio. In, in normal Roblox time, it'll do this in you know in the time that you actually click, but in studio, it takes a lot longer. And now if I join into the game, we should see that inside this clicks folder, there is our four clicks all loaded back with, this, uh, with the relevant information that we've given it. So that's all from today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something new and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.